I'm Emeril Lagasse. Welcome to the show, The Essence of Emeril. Today we're talking about squash. You know, squash has been around for a long time. And there is evidence of squash being eaten in Latin America thousands of years ago. You see, squash, they're divided generally into two varieties. Very simple. Winter and summer, if you think about it. Now, summer squashes, they have thin, edible skins. You know, those ones with the soft seeds. And there are squashes such as like zucchini and yellow and crookneck. Now, winter squashes, they have hard, thick skin and seeds like acorn and butternut, pumpkins and spaghetti squash. You see, the hard skin of winter squash protects the flesh and allows them to be stored longer, also because of the weather conditions, than summer squash. Now, in the fall, when a lot of these squashes start popping up, in winter and even into the spring because with nature these days, at least in uh, Louisiana, a lot of these squashes now are available. They used to be a very short season, but uh, in the last several years, you start seeing a lot more of these winter squashes, more and more and longer and longer. I mean, right up until springtime. And some of them are available year round, like pretty much the spaghetti squash. Well, that's this one right here, the spaghetti squash with that beautiful yellow color. And uh, we like to do a lot of things at the restaurants with spaghetti squash. Simply, you can boil them. A way that I like to do them is just cut them in half, rub them with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper, and then you roast them. And uh, when you sort of scrape the inside flesh, you get these strands that look and taste just like spaghetti. This is a Japanese version of uh, squash and uh, another type of squash here, spotted. There are all kinds of names for these. One of uh, my favorite that I grew up in in New England was uh, acorn squash. It sort of looks like an oversized acorn and very, very hard. And they come in various uh, shapes and sizes. Uh, this is another type of squash here. And another one of my favorite squashes that I grew up with was a butternut squash. Now, when you're working with these squashes, they're very, very hard, as you can see. I mean, they're very, very, very hard. And uh, also, I want you to get that. They also could be very dangerous when you're going to split them. Uh, and splitting them for, you know, maybe you want to drizzle them with a little olive oil. You put them in the oven to roast them. That's a simple way. You can parboil them. You can dice them. Now, if you're not going to do that, then um, there are other ways that you can cut them. Like the acorn squash has this very, very cool type of shape. First of all, you have the bottom shape just like an acorn uh, that you can dice out and use the flesh. I like to use this as a vegetable, diced up, peeled. Uh, you can dice them, puree them, you can mash them, you can keep them in dice and just saute them after they're blanched. In the particular case of the acorn squash, you can also cut these rather cool little designs. As you can see here, and what you can do is you can just remove out these seeds. Now, I like to save the seeds. I like to reserve the seeds because what I like to do is I like to blanch them, uh, clean them up real good, and then I also like to just... Um, toast them and use them for garnishes just some you don't have to just be pumpkin seeds they make great garnishes and we usually garnish a bunch of things squash is also good for a lot of rice dishes that you can work inside of it uh, lots of vitamins and etc cetera, etc cetera. anyhow there's that cool design that I was saying you could just put some oil or butter and cinnamon and sugar how we used to have them in New England and just cook them until they're fork tender and uh, the other type of squash, when you're going to sort of split them long ways, you've got to remember to really just be careful. Get a good base, a sharp knife, and then you want to just sort of cut them down. As you can see, the butternut, look at that beautiful color. And we'll just sort of clean these, clean these out a little bit. I like to save those seeds as well. I like to brush them with a little oil, 
little salt, little pepper. And uh, if you bake them in a not too hot of an onion uh, oven, you want to have a, an oven that's maybe about 325, uh, 350 degrees. You want to bake them until they're fork tender. Each squash has a different texture, and uh, it's amazing just how many things that you can do with them uh, from raw stage to cook stage. And I'll tell you what. Right after the break, I'm going to start on a great winter squash chowder. Something that I grew up with. I love chowders. Don't go away. We'll be right back on The Essence of Emerald. Welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and thanks for staying with us. Now let's put some winter squash to work and make a delicious winter chowder. I mean, I grew up on chowder in Fall River. I mean, used to have Manhattan clam chowder and New England clam chowder. and So chowders, I have a great memory of eating chowder. But before I show you how to make a little winter squash, chowder. Now, it doesn't have to be winter to make this chowder or to use this squash because of the season and the extension of the season. But what I did with that acorn squash earlier, I want to show you that what you can do, another really nice thing, a really cool thing to do, and it's very festive, and you want to impress your guests. Well, actually what I'm doing here is I'm carving a little soup bowl you can just carve a little soup bowl by carving the inside, just like that, of the squash. And then what you can do is you just clean that on the inside out. And then you can save these pieces of squash that you clean out for your soups or purees or your chowders. And you clean that really good. And then what you can do is just brush it with a little oil and some salt, pepper, bake it just until it's fork tender. And then you can serve those and use those for, you guess, as a little bowl. Now, I'm going to start some chowder. And uh, one of the first things that I grew up with my chowder was having a little bit of bacon. Or perhaps maybe you want to use a little salt pork. I'm going to take a little bit of bacon with just a little bit of oil. Now, do you want a thick chowder? Or do you want a, a brothy chowder? It's entirely up to you. You want to get this bacon. Just want to get this bacon sort of cooking a little bit, extracting some of the flavor out. And then, while that's rendering out, what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of different squashes that we're going to use. I've got some of that acorn squash right here that we're going to use that I've just sort of peeled and now I've diced. I've got some pumpkin. I had a little bit of pumpkin as well as a little bit of butternut squash and I've diced them as well. I'm going to put some potato. Uh, just going to put a little bit of potato right there. And then I have leeks because I love leeks in chowder. After the bacon gets rendered out, as you can see there, what we're going to do then is we're going to add our leek to that and saute that a couple of minutes and this is what I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning right now I'm going to add a little bit of salt and uh, a little bit of pepper now if you wanted to have a thicker chowder what you could do is this would be the time right now where you could add a little bit more oil and then you would add flour to this and sort of make a very, very light roux. If you want a thicker chowder, that's what you could do. But you know what? I'm not in a thick chowder kind of mood today. I'm in a brothy chowder mood. So whatever mood you're in, 
you're in a thick chowder mood, make a roux right now. But if you're feeling a little brothy in your mood, like I am right now, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna make a broth chowder. So now I'm gonna add my butternut squash and my diced potato and I'm gonna add a little bit of my acorn squash as well as some pumpkin. And now what I wanna do is I wanna come back and sort of re-season that. I also wanna say something about thick chowder, brothy chowder. You know, the squashes that we add in there, they have a lot, a lot, a lot of substance and they're gonna have a lot of, little bit of starch as well beside the potato. So maybe what you wanted to do is instead of adding a roux, you could just add some water or some, some broth or whatever right now. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of chicken stock a little chicken stock or a little chicken broth. Or we could add a little bit of water. We could add both. And we could just cook that around a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to a boil. Mmm, tasting good already. We're going to bring this up to a boil, and then we're going to actually just sort of let it simmer, let the squash cook. And what I like to do then is after the squash really starts to cook, I like to either mash a little bit of the squashes inside of the broth to give it a little bit more texture. You could use an immersion blender. Uh, I'm certainly probably going to cream this at the end, which I suggest to make it even a little uh, more rich and that wonderful texture that cream will give to that. But keep that in mind, uh, either brothy, we could just let it be and serve it, or we could add a little bit of texture into it. One of the textures that I really, really enjoy is I like taking these guys right here and cleaning the seeds after you're done cleaning them. And uh, I like to toss them in a little bowl with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And then you just toast them in the oven so that they get good and golden brown and crunchy. You can do that way ahead of time. And let that be so that you have a little garnish. You can also do it in the skillet but it's just as easy in the oven. We're gonna check on our soup right now. It's starting to come to a boil. So once it comes to a boil, we're gonna just turn that heat down a little and uh, let it start to simmer. And guess what, when we come back, I'm gonna butter you up with another fabulous squash dish. Don't go away, stay with me on The Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and uh, thanks for staying uh, with me on The Essence of Emeril. We're going to make some uh, butternut squash spetzel. Spetzel, yeah, spetzel. Spetzel's a German dish, Austrian, German. I love them, little dumplings. They're tiny little noodles or dumplings. It's made with flour, eggs, water, uh, also made with a little bit of milk and salt. I like to... Uh, flavor them with a little bit of nutmeg. Some people like some besides salt and pepper. In Germany, spetzel is served as a side dish, much like potatoes are, or like in Louisiana, how we serve rice. It's often accompanied by a sauce, a gravy, or whichever way you like them. But uh, I'm going to show you. We do a lot of things with these little dumplings, these little spetzels. But um, what we need to do is I've got a, a little bowl here with a little whisk, and I'm gonna add some eggs. I'm gonna add some eggs. Now, you may be saying, how is he gonna make butternut squash spetzel? Well, I'm gonna show you, because what I did is I took that, you remember that butternut squash that we were working with, and I was roasting it earlier? Well, I cooked that until it was very, very, very tender, and scraped some out, and then I mashed some. I just simply mashed it. Now, how difficult is that? This is what I have. I have some mashed butternut squash. I want to whisk 
my eggs. And then what I want to do is I want to add some of my squash puree right inside of my eggs. Butternut squash. And then I'm going to work that butternut squash inside of my eggs. And then I'm going to add a little bit of milk as well. And once you get a little bit of milk in there, then what you can do, I've got a little bit of uh, nutmeg from my little nutmeg box. Whoop, drop it right in there. That's always a little dandy, but listen, I love fresh nutmeg. Look at that. See how easy it is to grate it on that little box? And it's hot as a rock. You just sort of grate it in there. There's nothing like fresh nutmeg. Now, I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. Add a little bit of salt in there. And uh, I love a little bit of pepper. Do some freshly grated pepper in there. Now, let me show you. What we're going to do is whisk all of those spices in there. We're going to taste it. Delicious. We'll need a little bit more of that beautiful grated nutmeg. Great. And then what I have, I got some salted uh, little boiling water that I'm going to lightly salt. I'm going to show you. We're going to come back to that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some flour. And uh, you can always come back and add more. And uh, we're going to add some flour inside of that liquid of ours. And that f see the beautiful color that the uh, butternut squash is given? And what we're doing is we're making a dough right now. We're making a dough. And so um, add a little bit of flour in there. And you can always keep adding, but it's hard to, uh, and you don't want to get it too thick because the thing with spetzel, this little dough that we have, little dumplings that you can see, is that once you get the, the dough, the batter, see that batter that we got? Once you got that in there working, you can always test it. But the way that you got to do spetzel is that you got to pour that dough through a sieve. Through a sieve. Okay? And then what you got to do is you got to push down through the sieve and you sort of work that dough and they sort of fall into our salted water. You see what that? I'm going to give you a little. You see that? Those little dumplings like that? Isn't that fantastic? I love spetzel. And you just sort of work the batter of the spetzel batter just through a little sieve like this. Now, you can use a colander, uh, will work, a china cap. You don't want to do anything too fine because um, you want to be able to push it through the holes so that, um, and this batter is like the perfect, perfect batter right now for this. And you keep working them and working them, just keep pushing it down. If you have a lot left over, you can certainly just keep this batter in the ice box. And uh, what you have right there, look at that. You see that? That's the spetzel. And you just want to blanch these a little bit. You want to blanch these a little bit. And then once you blanch them, you can just take them out, and uh, they're perfect. Now, look at our soup, our chowder. So our chowder's been cooking away. Well, this is what we're going to do to finish it up. We're going to cream this a little bit, just to give it a little bit of texture. I'm also going to add a little bit of sage and a little bit of parsley. And uh, the reason for that is because it gives it a nice color. You see that? And you can see the consistency of that chowder. The squash is beginning to, uh, to bake up. And uh, that's quite easy. We just bring this, adjust the seasoning. Mmm. Boy, is that delicious. Mmm. Well, to finish this chowder up, add a little salt, a little pepper. You see our spetzel? They're done now. They've come on top. You see that? 
You drain these, you just take them out, put them inside of the bowl, you let them cool, then you just lightly saute them, and that little delicious squash chowder, you just dish that right inside of your little squash bowl. I like to garnish my soup with a little bit of chopped parsley, some crispy bacon. Woo! Boy, I'll tell you. That's it for today. I'm Emily Lagasse. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow on the Essence of Emerald.